So is it the thing with artists that they, they want to live on boats or tugboats or barges? No, um, it's just that they can't afford to live in houses. <laughs> but you're not exactly a starving artist, are you? Um, I've got wine and yogurt in the fridge, I'm fine. No, my problem was I was fine. Um, I had a, I was a grown-up. I was married and drove a Volvo and sat on committees. And then I had a marital capsize, which is where things started to go a bit pear-shaped because I um, didn't come away with anything from that. And so I had to start again with the contents of a car and not much else. So um, I had to live on my wits since then. I'm having a wonderful time, but I had to leave my financial security behind. So I, I did. I was homeless for a couple of years, but not chronically, because I have some brilliant friends like Julia who let me the houseboat, and various people who let me sofas and got me cheap lets. But that's not a sustainable way to live. So the idea of living on this boat was I had to be self-sufficient, affordable, and um, at my age, I don't want to be somebody's lodger. I wanted my own space, however quirky and tiny. And it turns out living on the river is fantastic because there's a whole community here. There's a lot of um, misfits and eccentrics and people like me who, uh, you know, <laughs> grum grumpy elderly single women <laughs> with a history. <laughs> and uh, there's all, a lot of creative people on the river, a lot of musicians, poets, writers, retired this, that and the other, retired master mariners. It's a lovely, lovely mix. You don't get all the same kind of people in, in the same neighbourhood like you tend to on shore. So um, it's been um, sometimes the biggest upsets can bring you the biggest richness in other ways. And I discover there are worse things in life than not having a, a bathroom. <laughs> You've got good friends. You've got everything. <laughs> well, it has to be good friends if you haven't got a bathroom. <laughs> yes. Oh, they are. They are. When my own shower wasn't working, it took me a while to get that going. I'd turn up at I, have, I do have proper friends who live in proper houses and um, I turn up at their door with a bottle of wine in one hand and a towel in the other. <laughs> As a clue. As a clue. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Can I have a shower? <laughs> Before we drink the wine. <laughs> yes. I'm very lucky with my mooring. Um, it's very hard to find somewhere to keep a boat if you're living on it and the River Deven is very full of boats like mine. Um, I'm on a lovely quayside with a nice um, view that I can go sailing in in my dinghy and I pay £2,000 a year for this mooring. My other expenses are um, obviously electricity and council tax and I'm just changing my status from cruising berth to residential berth if I can, I'm trying to do that. And that's about and the insurance for the boat which is tiny. So, yeah, but my shores are very nice, they give me my standard cruising ground and I do take her out from time to time, but that's not a lot. Um, and that's it really for, for living, apart from maintenance. I get her taken out every other year and spend a couple of grand getting her painted, bottom scrubbed, checked over, any minor repairs done. But I'm very lucky because I bought a boat deliberately that was under 40 tonnes because this river at Melton and the travel hoist will take me out. If I had a boat bigger than that I'd have to go to a different river to get lifted out and the temptation is not to do it <laughs> if it's more of a faff and takes weeks and you have to get crew and choose your weather and get out of the river and down to another river you you think well, maybe not this year but if, if it's just I've got to go a mile up river to get my hoist at a very reasonable helpful boat yard so I thought that would be a good practice to keep her keep her in good shape. And are there any facilities ashore? No, um, there's a loo, there's no shower, um, my laundry is quite expensive, it has to go to two little girls in Melton who do it for me for £16 pounds a time, but I don't have any washing machine maintenance, <laughs> everything has its everything has its cost. I obviously spend money on paint and, and keeping her as nice as I can, I did the whole this year the decks will be done. No, I did the whole last year, the decks will be done this year. Um, so this, yeah, it's the usual I mean, ongoing maintenance. I need to spend money on getting the interior finished one day. You've had her about four years now. Have you not outgrown her yet? I would, not in I don't want a boat that's too big for me to look after. Um, and I do love her. What I miss is not having bigger living space. 
it's perfect when it's just me but I do like having friends around and I would like so far I know I can only fit me two guitarists one fiddle player and a penny whistler in here without absolutely um, getting wedged in I would like a more sociable living space where I could have some kind of more sociable sessions but that's my only that's the only thing I miss you'll notice I have no television which means um, I have a lot more peaceful life and get a lot more done and get out more I bought her quite cheaply £20,000 which is the most I've been able to borrow um, I had a bit more left in the pot for the essential work so a lot needed doing some of which I've done and the rest of which I'll get there one day when I can I had to spend money first on the essentials which was everything you couldn't see I got a hold out at Melton Boatyard just up river and got Mel Skeet who was an expert um, now, now deceased bless him but an expert in steel boats and the yard still kept going by Sam Simon and said look her over Mel and have I bought a mess or have I not and he got her out of the water, looked her over and said, she'll do. Started sailing and started drawing and got fed up of being a secretary. Had a bit of a midlife crisis, you know, I think we should always have several of those, and decided to paint boats, um, which I did for a while, living on a very small boat. And gradually got into cartooning for mother, when I lived in Vermont Crouch, I used to draw things for the yacht clubs I was members of. Got did a bit of cartooning, Gradually got better, as one tends to do when you do a lot of it. Got a bit obsessed about drawing boats, found it fascinating. Um, started selling a few watercolours. And then I had a lucky break because the RYA were looking for an illustrator for um, a series of children's books. And they'd seen um, some of the things. I, I, I produced a little book called Log Book for Children to keep my son entertained while we were on long passages when he was about 11 and they liked that and they phoned me up mid-channel um, on a long trip and said would I be interested in illustrating a book for children on how to sail. So of course I said yes, went to see them and they said well by the way would I write it as well so I said well yes. So I worked with um, um, a dinghy instructor because I'd never learned to do it the proper way. I just sort of bumbled around in boats um, as you do. So this was the first book called Go Sailing which is um, still very popular with sailing schools and my approach is to put a joke on every page and make the whole learning fun and I put a lot in there about independent sailing and try to make it about more than whizzing around in circles with a rib up your backside. Um, so then they commissioned six more books after that which was excellent, it kept me going, really kind of got me going on the path of being a proper nautical illustrator. In the meantime I was started doing the cartoon every month for practical boat owner. Um, the late great Mike Payton, who I knew well and was a great supporter, amazing man, um, sad loss, but uh, he, he, uh, he did a good age. He gradually stopped doing cartoons for the magazines when he lost his eyesight, so I sort of took over the slot in practical boat owner. Um, and I think I've been doing it for about 10 years now and I illustrate the Dave Selby Mad About the Boat column, uh, which is always very, very funny. Uh, challenging, because I read it and think, what the hell am I gonna do? And uh, then I do it, it's fine. I sit there and chew my pencil. Um, I've also, um, don't just do cartoons, I do different kinds of stuff. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Classic Boat for the last year or so, every month, Tom Cunliffe writes a very entertaining article about his adventures and misadventures in various traditional boats. And Tom sends me the article and I read it and have a chuckle and then think, what am I going to do with this? And um, I do something, discuss it with the magazine, eventually do it. And then quite often I get an email from Tom going, hmm, can you just... And the words, can you just, for an illustrator are always... Uh, Desperate because it usually means redoing the whole thing. We've 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 fine tuned it now. Um, does that does that mean? Can you just make me look younger? <laughs> I I did get one where he said, "You make me look fat in that one." F figure drawing is much more challenging than boats. Though occasionally on the boats he goes, "Hmm, four stairs isn't quite in the right place." And I go, "Tom, who'd know?" He said, "I know." So um, we have 
um, reached a working arrangement where I get it as right as I can and he sort of um, does it quibble quite so much if it's not exactly accurate. It's hard to, some are easier than others, there's not a huge amount of photographic references for all the amazing things he used to get up to in engineless boats way back when, um, so I have to make it up. But luckily I do have a particular fondness for pilot cutters sailing wise. I try and spend a bit of time every summer sailing on one of the Luke Powell pilot cutters mm -hmm. down in Cornwall. So luckily I do have a really good, reasonably good mental reference for what they look like and how they're rigged. So between us, I'm, I'm getting, I've been doing it over a year now and we, we, we're cracking it now. The first few issues were difficult because it's very hard to find the reference material and I was coming up against the things I don't do very well but I always believe that if you can't do something very well I'll just find out how to do it and practice. <laughs> and of course you um, also give, uh, do talks on cruise liners. But, yes. But then you still have a deadline for Classic Boat magazine. This is interesting. I decided I would find a way out of winters. I love my boat and I love living on her but I hate cold weather. I can't do cold. January and February are just grim. The boat is toasty warm and warmer than, far warmer than the house I used to live in. I have an electric blanket, I have a wood stove, no problem. But it's the practicalities of getting sacks of coal down a gangplank in a gale and the darkness, the relentless dark and you know, wrestling with filling the water tank in the a, in a, in a pouring rain. And I do find January, February challenging. I would if I was in a house to be honest. So I've discovered a wheeze where I go off on cruise ships to teach art for a month or two in the winter and um, that gets me out of the winter. I come back tanned but broke. Um, so I have to teach a class every day but of course th with my magazine work with Classic Boat and Practical Boat Owner you don't miss deadlines and I never have and so I have to do the, the main jobs as I go. Luckily the boat I was on this winter, Saga Sapphire, has internet it was very slow but it worked especially at three in the morning when nobody else was on it so i was able to keep up with the deadlines the challenge of course is getting the images to the editor the especially the classic boat one which is a big image it's usually a double page spread and it has to be high quality i don't have access to an a3 scanner this time i got around that by chatting up the ship's chaplain who had a very good camera and I knew he was sympathetic because he was a classic boat reader and he's the chaplain for the Dunkirk Little Ship Fleet. So he was very helpful and we'd spend hours finding the shady side of the deck, taping my image to the bulkhead, trying to get an even light on it and a good photograph. We got away with it, it worked. So um, all, all the challenges. The previous winter I was on a P&O ship which didn't have internet. So every Pacific island I can't tell you what they look like, but I can tell you where the internet cafes are at the back end of the container ports. <laughs> I had to nip ashore and, uh, and find things that I needed. But uh, it's, it's um, yes, it's a very strange existence, but it's um, a fantastic way to, for me to travel to places I would never otherwise get to and earn my keep as I go.